Hello everybody, I'm Andermore Central and welcome back to another video in OMSI 2 The Bus Simulator. Once again, another one of my videos where we're driving OMSI 2, we have a bit of a real life repaint and I tell you a little bit about the real life buses, um, stuff that I can't really put into my own um, bus review videos um, because usually most of the stuff hasn't happened yet, it's theoretical, it's news and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much what I do here. If you are new to it, hello. If you've watched most of these videos before, welcome back. So we're currently at um, a bus stand in Yorkshire County's version 3 map. And we are about to start driving the X4 service. That is an express route. Initially, I was going to do this video with a street deck. However, I looked at the route, realised that it primarily involved motorways. And for well, it's definitely going to have to be um, the Eclipse because I will get a bit bored of the Street Dex limiter if we're going on dual carriageways. So it's another one of these express runs that I like to do. We've got quite a lot of buses um, moving around and what have. So that's what we're taking over from. So I will skip the time forward to hopefully, there we go, get rid of that so it doesn't nick all our passengers. And we're driving the X4 service from where we're at now, that's Ashbury um, sort of centre, it comes out as Express Stop, but it is Ashbury Station, up to Eversham Stand 6. So it runs as X4 in one direction, X5 in the other. So it's one of those, it's one of actually the last ones of these um, that exist um, on this map. That For those of you that remember version 2, there was a lot of one route in one direction and another number in the other. There's not as much of that on here now. There needs to be a lot more. That does exist, right? Oh, okay. We're going to have to scroll and find it. Where it is. I'll tell you what, we'll actually, we'll do it through this, I think, because... Oh! Oh, lovely. Okay. There we go, that's better. Technically, an express, but I'm not sure that's the right ground, right blind because it's supposed to stand six. Hmm. It's got to be here somewhere. Must have one of the express blinds then, presumably. Quite certain on my sheets it says it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be for stun six. That's definitely not the right one. Hmm, it's got to be here somewhere. Those with the lights. Night terminus. I didn't think we'd be having this issue if I'm honest. <coughs> Stand Express, that's the X5 one. Um, it's definitely, let me just double check this board because it that, that definitely. Oh, it comes up with Stand Express. Ah, okay, it is Stand Express. There we go. It is Stand Express sorted. I did think it would be Express, but obviously when it says Express and then Arrival, you, you kind of look at the first one. There we go, that solves that issue. Let's see if there's actually anybody waiting for us, because we are going to be slightly late.
daytime running lights on. Soon. <laughs> I'm trying to think the latest the latest repaints we saw. We saw some quite exciting repaints recently. Um, the, the screenshots that were published and then they looked very, very nice. Um, the bus itself um, is still nearing completion. Again, there's not much else to say on the subject of that at the moment, apart from the fact it is nearing completion. Um, the developers are still working on it. Um, so it's definitely going to be one to look forward to in way in the not so far future. So the vehicle in front of us is BD13 NFR that is First Bradford 69569. The reason we're driving this one is because this is the only Eclipse 2 so far at Bradford to receive the City of Bradford livery. Um, the rest of them are still in Olympia with their weird chevrons that they had on the sides of them on the front and the back. Um, some chevrons are missing, some have been reapplied, some have been abandoned altogether. And 69569 is now the only one in this lovely two-tone blue City of Bradford livery. Quite reminiscent of Bradford City Transport and Bradford Travel. So it's quite interesting is 69569, it's part of the 695 batch that Bradford have. Now the 695 batch at Bradford weren't actually new to Bradford, they were diverted all over the place before they ended up at Bradford. Um, initially a number of the vehicles, oh, stop, there we go, um, a number of the vehicles entered service at Manchester and operated for a very very brief spell. over to Bradford for use on the Bradford City um, services. Initially, I believe it was the 607s and 608s they were used on. Um, and they were initially used on the, or back then it was just the 607s, so they were used on the 607 service primarily and used to see use on other routes as well, because bearing in mind they weren't branded, they were just in Olympia livery. So the vehicles themselves um, transferred over to Bradford to usher out the old T and B regiment. B temporarily renounce. Um, some W Reg renowns um, carried on because they were compliant with the Disability Discrimination Act um, that came in that basically ushered out the other ones. Um, but the majority of the B10s were T Reg and B Reg, and they all got withdrawn in favour of these. These were quite nice, featuring E lever seating, and were actually some of the last um, B7 out of the Eclipses that First Bus purchased. Um, after that, um, they went on to streetlights, and Bradford then got its taste of streetlights with the 15 plate batch of 632s. Now, the 15 plate batch of 632s were relatively interesting. Um, they, they entered service on the 620 service and um, the yellow line um, between Bailey and Howarth Road via Bradford City Centre, and they ushered off the W Reg renowns on the service because all the 608s, um, the sort of the R6852, 554, those ones were predominantly all branded for the yellow line. And when the street lights came in, they replaced them, they replaced them to normal service work, and the number of which also got transferred out of Bradford and went over to Halifax. Now, when these streetlights entered service at Bradford, um, they were initially on the 620 service. Quite a um, absurd thing to think of in sort of current times. And the reason they got taken off 
the 620 service um, quite early on into their lives um, was due to the fact that they were unsuitable with capacitors. They were unsuitable with passenger loadings. The drivers didn't like it because it's a senior rotor, um, so it didn't work at all. Um, so they actually swapped around the street lights and the eclipses on the services. The street lights get predominantly allocated to the 607, and by pretty much then, um, the 608 was about to be launched as the 607 was split. And um, the eclipses went on to the 620s, that's where they were more known to be. They then had a little bit of a dalliance where they briefly swapped them back again and then swapped them back to what they were, um, but they predominantly stayed as they were. That's why street lights um, back in the day, a few years ago, were quite rare on the 620 um, because they just the regular drivers on the 620 just did not like them. Now all of that has gone out of the window and as we go into sort of 2022 into the more current times and the vast number of these B7 Arabics work the guide wheels for use on the Manchester Road bus guideway corridor. It was always argued when they um, first arrived as to why they didn't have guide wheels um, to rush around the LX400 and the B7 Geminis that were used at the time on the guideways. And even then, um, you can go as far back as the beat and be leaving out that at the time that these were new, um, quite a number of the 608s were still used on guideway work. Still also fitted with guide wheels. I think 60844 also did a bit of time over in Leeds on the York Road guideway as well when they were short on buses. Speaking of the York Road Guideway, and initially I was going to drive this run until I worked out it was like this, um, with a street deck, and I'm going to discuss the lead side of it. So I'm going to discuss the lead side of it now, because we've kind of linked onto that. So the X4 service um, has, is a service that has run in very, very recent times with the first was in Leeds. And yes, um, you would be right not to know about it, because the route only lasted two um, it was an incredibly short lasting route. It lasted over, um, over the COVID pandemic and it was launched by first bus as passenger numbers returned to um, sort of the buses. The reason it was introduced um, was to reduce the amount, the amount of passengers on the already reduced capacity buses running between Seacroft and Leeds um, sort of as the number four, 16, 50s and 49s. As an issue that was occurring at the time was that people were using were using those services from Seacroft and then people in Gipton in Hare Hills and um, weren't able and even Crossgate weren't able to get on a bus into the city centre for their essential office jobs because the buses were already full when they arrived to them. You've got to remember that back in the pandemic um, capacities were limited. That's a very obvious one. I've been, been given a little bit more arrows on that because it's only just go straight forward. I was going to go right past this bus stop. The Mug 4 service um, was run by Hutlet Park as a way to combat this so that people working their office jobs could get to them. It ran in the morning peak from Seacroft to Leeds, ran about three trips, and then ran about three or four trips on the peak evening, and used one of the X84 E400 MMCs usually. The service, as I say, only lasted two weeks, um, and then the sort of COVID restrictions were changed, and that basically meant there was no need for it, as capacity was increased slightly on buses. It also worked out that not as many people um, were sort of catching um, the buses as they initially thought, um, as uh, the media was constantly changing uh, the perception of the pandemic, um, so it wasn't it, it wasn't the service that was actually required. It was required in a very very short term, but wasn't really required in the long term. It also wasn't that advertised. It was only incredibly briefly advertised um, by a number of individuals, and um, was never corporately advertised as a service that was going to last.
speaking of the 400 MMCs, um, they've now gone um, south. They're now in South Wales. Um, that's all I shall say on them now, um, because they will be featuring in a future video. So there'll be a few of you watching this, um, obviously with it being a City of Bradford repaint video, thinking to yourselves, well, I'm more central, do you know what's happening with repaints? Now the repaints in First West Yorkshire have taken a relatively interesting turn. Um, for some unbeknownst reason to us, um, Halifax have gone for, have gone for return to Olympia. They're calling it Urban 2, I believe, um, but they've gone back to Olympia and um, it's basically um, Olympia but with the an entire purple rear end of the bus. Um, an, entirely, an entirely purple rear doesn't particularly change the fact that they've gone back to Olympia. It is a monumental shame because the HX Connect livery was very nice. Yes, compared to the HD Connect in Huddersfield, the city of Bradford and Leeds City, it was an incredibly... Oh, we're not going to stop in time. Oh. <laughs> Didn't want to have to do that. Probably should have sped up and kept going, but we learn these things. We live and we learn. Um, at least, at least it did stop. Could have been a lot worse. But with Halifax going back to the Olympia, and um, Bradford have been very slow in recent times to get the repaint sorted. I think it's primarily to do with how many vehicles, transfers, and cascades can be going on at the moment. And there seems to be a particular issue um, with First West Yorkshire not being able to decide where buses need to be or need to go. Um, I don't quite know why, because the majority of the stuff that's transferring around at the moment is just B9s. Um, so it's a little bit, little bit strange um, that all these, all these B9s are transferring here, there, and everywhere. And um, it just seems a little bit of an odd move, really. Um, I mean, I understand some of them. Obviously, Halifax are trying to replace their B7 Geminis, um, so they're getting a lot of B9s. But they're getting B9s that went to Leeds and have now entered service on their schoolwork in Leeds City livery. They've got the Yorkshire Rider one that's entered service in Yorkshire Rider livery. And it just seems to be a, a little bit chaotic at the moment with um, brands, and then you sort of start to question to yourself and go, well, why did they transfer the YQ07 back to Leeds to then repaint them to then transfer them once again to Halifax? Just a little bit. A little bit of an odd move, um, really. I mean, some of them have gone to Huddersfield this time round on the transfers. They've split them between Halifax and Huddersfield. Um, that is um, a sort of a more sensible move. Now, Huddersfield streetlights have also arrived. Um, they haven't quite knew that they were getting streetlights. Um, it was it was sort of quite the odd bit of trivia with them. Um, we usually we usually quite knowledgeable on the fact of when areas get buses because someone tells us or we sleep from management or something like that. But no one said anything about these sort of street lights. Yes, there was a few sort of rumours hinted and in the order it did say there was something but it was never confirmed it was never confirmed as to when they were going to arrive what livery they were going to arrive in uh, what route they were going to be on what spec they were going to be there was none of that so these street lights have rocked randomly at Huddersfield in a livery that is totally different to every other livery um, that First West Yorkshire has um, they've arrived and they follow on numerically from the Bradford ones, they're the same spec as the Bradford ones. But it is still an incredibly random, random condition uh, to the Huddersfield fleet. I mean, we understand why they've got them, they've got them to usher out the Euro 3 B7s, and they'll probably also help to usher out a few of the Geminis that do sort of normal service work, um, a few of the B7 Geminis. Um, it is still an incredible random thing, um, very, very random, um, and not used to all be. Which way were they? I think we got left. <coughs> I mean, it was quite nice when they arrived because obviously it, it got rid of the rumours and we knew what was going on, but it was still so random uh, when they rocked up at Huddersfield. Um, obviously, Huddersfield not having new buses. 
um, for quite some years. I believe the last new bosses they had will have been these reloads. The other ones, the 64 plates, I believe. Um, they'll have been the last new ones. Um, and they ushed out the um, old SPD Denny Stars. So we'll be doing a video on the new street lights, don't worry about that one, um, there is a video um, in the planning um, for doing the street lights, I'll probably also do a little bit of a video on the new lead street decks, um, obviously the new lead street decks, the 359, the C400 MMCs, more on that um, in another video, but um, these new 359 street decks are slightly different um, to the rest of the street decks that they've had to date. It seems that, lead, that first leads and right bus can't come to an agreement as to what the specification should be. Um, so every single new batch of street decks seems to be some roulette of what what style are we going to do, what grab pulls are we going to do, what seat and layout are we going to do, um, what next stop announcement board are we going to do, what branding are we going to do. Um, and they all seem to be a little bit of roulette um, that doesn't particularly help when you're trying to achieve. a bit more notice with these arrows. These far left lane all rooms, okay there we go. They're just very very small writing, I just wish they were a little bit more prominent. I understand that you obviously want to keep writing discreet, um, but if you are having the arrows on in the first place, then it usually means you need to know the information. You're not necessarily fussed about it being discreet. It's far right lane. Well, that said left earlier. There's lots of exciting videos on First West Yorkshire to come up very, very soon. I wasn't expecting a sort of to do many videos on them because I was kind of expecting everything to um, remain a little bit tame. I wasn't expecting too much to change. But obviously, um, at the time I'm filming this, the first X Yellow Bus's Gemini B9's out um, in service. That's entered service today. Um, the street lights are being prepped for service as we speak. Um, the, I mean, going down to South Yorkshire, the South Yorkshire X London Gemini is nearly ready to enter service. And it just seems that we've had such a massive influ influx of excitement out of absolutely nowhere um, that is always quite fun. I mean, obviously, the byproduct of it is um, we're going to lose um, the B7s, um, we're not going to have the B7 Geminis, B7CLs, and it's going to sort of turn into what Bradford's like, where the oldest bus is is an 07 plate 692 that I'm still getting my head around at the moment because I'm not quite used to that. Uh, I'm not quite used to the, the prospect 
that Bradford used to have the old B10B leads, one of the last places for them was the last place to run Olympians in regular service. Um, it was one of the, um, and I, the, I went on the last, one of the last Olympians in regular passenger service in Bradford. Uh, we had some of the last beaten BLEs, uh, Renowns, we had some of the last, um, I mean, the, the last Everstone. I mean, we had some of the last B7Ls, and you're still not my stamp, are you? But this is the bus station, and I don't fancy going past it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I'm not sure that this was my... Oh, no, it was stand six. Oh, I did miss it. It was stand six. Okay. Oops. Oopsie-daisy. That happens. That happens. I can't get into the bus station to go on to Langover now. Okay. That was, yeah, and I'm not going around the block again. So I suppose this is where we finish off the video. So, yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed this one. It's quite nice to drive an express route. I don't get to drive as many express routes on this map. Um, partially because I don't know the times that they run usually. I got quite lucky with the timings on this map. Just spawned into somewhere and thought, oh, yes, we'll drive this route. Um... But yeah, this video's just been me telling you a little bit of history about the bus, about the repaints, about guideways, and then all the exciting stuff that's happening um, in West Yorkshire at the moment. A lot of which this video is coming on very soon, and um, you can probably tell I'm quite excited um, with the videos I've been filming on the Omsi side, and um, the fact I've been banging on about it so much lately. Um, I am incredibly excited um, to film these videos and to see all of these buses out on the road. The most likelihood is I'll wait for them all to enter service and then head up to these locations. There's no point of me um, trying to go up and film them if there's just one bus out and ride up and down on the same bus. So I want a bit of a contrast. Go on a few of them, see if there's any differences with them and see how they all perform. Um, so we'll, we'll do that in the very near future. So do look out for those videos and if you do have any other suggestions on that or anything that I may have missed on the West Yorkshire side, please do and let me know in the comments below. For now though, I really hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you have, then do be sure to click that like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you haven't already, do be sure to subscribe to the Andamore Century YouTube channel for more content like this from the simulation section, as well as, as I've been discussing for the past 27 minutes, the real life bus industry. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next one I make. Goodbye for now. Bye.